students. So today we're going to be talking about the summary and response model essay or example essay that I gave you. Um, and today I'm going to point out some things that are important to notice or to recognize that I hope you'll be able to incorporate in your own essays when it's time to write your summary and response. Okay, so the first thing we can notice is good MLA format. I have my header, everything's double spaced, looking good, right? The second thing that I, I want to point out is that our first paragraph, right, is the summary paragraph. So in this paragraph, we have no opinions whatsoever. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the first paragraph because we talked about the summary a lot last module. That was our focus. But I do want to point out that in orange, we have the main idea of the video, right? So as a reader who has not seen this video, right, you haven't seen the video, you should be able to read that first sentence and know in general what that video was about, right? I hope that it's effective. And then everything in bold here are my author tags, right? So this is important because it helps to remind the reader that these are Kramer's ideas. These are someone else's ideas. These are not my ideas as the writer of this summary and response. And that's important because later in the response, I am going to give my opinion and I want to tell my ideas and I don't want them to be confused with Kramer's. So that's where author tags become really, really important, right? Okay. Um, after the summary paragraph, we have the thesis paragraph. And as you guys know, the thesis for any essay is like the most important part. It's the roadmap, right? So the thesis paragraph for the summary and response is also the most important part, in my opinion, because it tells the reader exactly what you're going to argue in your response. So for me, I chose two things to argue. One thing was something I agreed with Kramer about, and that's highlighted in green. And the other thing is something I disagreed with Kramer about, and that's highlighted in pink here, right? Um, and this is very, very common. If many times when we write a summary and response, I think students tend to want to be like, I agree, I agree with everything, right? Um, but that's, is that really thinking that critically? <laughs> I mean, it's great. Like, I definitely think you can agree with some things, but you should always try to point out at least one part that you disagree with because that adds more to the conversation instead of just saying, yeah, good job. You're saying, yeah, good job on part of that, but what about this other idea, right? So you're adding more to that conversation and it's a lot more interesting that way. So if you're going to agree, I suggest agreeing, but also disagreeing, okay? Okay, um, so in green, I highlight it in green because I wanted to show you that the green part becomes body paragraph number one of the response. And what I highlighted in pink, the part that I disagree with, can you guess what that becomes? Oh, did you say body paragraph two? then you're right, good job. So that also makes it really, really easy for the reader to follow, right? If you have two arguments in your thesis, um, each one will become a different body paragraph. Make sure to keep them in the same order. Okay, so moving down to body paragraph one. In the first sentence, I have a topic sentence, right? I'm sorry, a topic sentence that introduces not only what I agree with, but also why I agree with it. And I chose to talk about my friend Jamie, right, as an example. Because I knew I couldn't just say, I agree with Kramer that negative experiences can change your life. Because that paragraph would just be one sentence long. I need to add more to the conversation. So I used my friend Jamie as an example, and I compared her life to Kramer's life her negative experience to Kramer's negative experience. How that became life-changing for Jamie, just like it became life-changing for Kramer, right? So I use a comparison approach here. And everything that I highlighted here in yellow were things where I, I made a comparison or made a link between Jamie and Kramer, right? 
And I, you can see that I did that throughout. Kramer's prediction that your life will have new meaning was also true for Jamie, right? Uh, like Kramer, my friend Jamie was suddenly surrounded by love from family and friends. This health scare was very much a, a gift for Jamie, like it was for Kramer because da 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 da. So this is very, very important. These parts in yellow are important because many times the biggest mistake that I see students make when they write a response is they will just tell the story of their friend Jamie. And they'll just talk about Jamie and Jamie and Jamie and Jamie, right? But what they will forget to do is to bring it back to the original video or to the original source. They'll forget to make that link and explain why Jamie's story proves what you agree with Kramer about. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time because it's very, very important. We want to make sure that when we tell a story that we always link it back to the original video and explain why that story proves the argument to be true. Okay? So, you guys can analyze that a little bit more yourselves, but that's a bit of an overview of that one. And we're gonna move on to body paragraph two. So this is body paragraph two here. And remember that the thing that I disagree with is in red, okay? So again, I want to make that very clear. I put this topic sentence as the second sentence, right? Because I used a transitional sentence, but what happens when the ending is not a happy one? Watching Kramer's TED talk a second and third time made me think a bit more critically about her message that we should look for the gifts in our negative experiences, right? Then I go on to make a citation, an in-text citation from Kramer. This is a quote that Kramer said, and I copied it word for word. So the next time you're faced with something that's unexpected, unwanted, and uncertain, consider that it just may be a gift, right? So here I'm using Kramer's exact words because my plan is to show what's wrong with her words, okay? So I go on to say, I began to wonder, is it really a good message for everyone? And here the key word is everyone, right? Um, and then I use an example and I tell a story again about someone who I know very well who had a really terrible, tragic event in their lives. And for this person, this quote is impossible in my opinion, right? This quote is offensive in my opinion to uh, my grandmother-in-law, Maria, right? Um, so again, in, just like in body number one, we're seeing not only I disagree and here's why, but we're also seeing in the yellow parts, we're seeing me make a link between Maria's story and Kramer's story. In this case, because it's something I disagree with, I'm using Kramer's words to show why that's not true for Maria and therefore why that's not good advice for everyone in the world, right? So I'm using Maria's story to prove my point, but also using Kramer's words to prove my point as well. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is the conclusion, right? Um, students get a little bit confused with the conclusion sometimes because they think the conclusion should be a conclusion of the summary. But in fact, we're just using this summary to tell the reader what happened in the video. The main point of this essay is really the response. So when we write the conclusion, we want to write a conclusion for the response. We're writing a conclusion, conclusion for the response, okay? Um, so here we can see that I've summarized in green is the things that I agree with Kramer about. And again, the things in red or pink are the things that I disagree with Kramer about, okay? I start off general, then I go into Kramer and I talk about Jamie. I also talk about Maria, just very little bit, right? Because I already talked about them extensively in the other paragraphs, but I'm just mentioning them. And then in the end, um, 
I make a suggestion, right? This brings it out to the wider world. This is not just about Kramer. This is not about Jamie and Maria. This is about everyone. And this is my advice to all of my readers and all the people in the world, really. So I say, instead of trying to fix someone's trauma and demanding that they see it as a life-changing experience, I propose we try to empathize with the people who are suffering and experiencing what is sometimes an unimaginable grief. I hope we can all understand that everyone's experiences are different and unique and allow people to grieve and heal in their own way and in their own time, okay? All right, so I hope you guys can see that this is has some similarities with every essay that we've written, but it also has some differences, specifically in organization. Okay, if you guys have any questions or like to talk about um, this example or your own writing, your own summary and response, please feel free to email me or make an appointment. All right, have a great day, you guys, and thanks for watching.